There's also been some movement at Gloucester. Johan Ackerman, he's he's left as well. Are you guys surprised by that? By that? And and how would you judge his success and his time there? No, I'm gutted. Mate, absolutely gutted. I'll be honest with you, and, and surprised if I'm honest. Uh, did did not see that coming at all. Um, you know, Gloucester haven't played well this season, but as we saw with Wass and Goody and me joked about it that got, Wass were in relegation fight, and next thing they're in the top four. So you know that this Premiership was a, a slightly strange one. I don't think Cipriani was playing as well as he was last year. Um, obviously, the World Cup, and they've got a few guys in that in their team that would have been away with the World Cup as well. I'm absolutely gutted. One because I'm a Gloucester fan, and I don't know if I said I was captain there for a season. I was vice captain for two. Um, <laughs> because they've been a Gloucester have been a club right that have had so many different changes along the way, and I'm trying to work out what what's going on here. I'm trying to work out why Johan Ackerman would leave to go to Japan. When I, I'd say the job's not even half done. Like his first season was brilliant. I don't think they overachieved. I had them in the top four this year. I don't know. I, I, I'm trying to think what's different there. What has has caused him to want to leave? And I don't know the I don't know the ramifications around being furloughed. Does that mean that you're not under contract anymore, so you can speak to other clubs? If he went to South Africa and he took the South Africa job under Razi Erasmus, I'd be like, mate, that that's where I see you going. But I think the, the Gallagher Premiership have lost a real good rugby man. I know the lads at Gloucester absolutely loved working for him and the staff as well. I, you know, And every time I, I, I met him, I mean, obviously he knew me because I was captain and vice captain for two years. Uh, but just a, just a warm guy, you know. And uh, I'm gutted because I'm thinking, Gloucester now, who are you going to bring in? Who's out there now that you can bring in? Poor Ravo. Poor Sam Ravo, my best mate. Ravo's arm. Ugh. Mate, he's got floods to deal with. He's got the coronavirus to deal with. And now he's got the guy who employed him, Johan Ackerman. Uh, well, I don't know. Ray might get to go to Japan. He likes sushi. So, uh, good to goody. Yeah, um, I am as well, actually. And I think from the outside, when you hear the news and when you <clears throat> find out what's gone on, I think everyone will be surprised. When you don't know the intricate details of the club and look into it, you're very shocked because he's such a good guy. Isn't he? You see him smiling. He's always got a smile on his face. Um, and the rumours you hear around the club are, as Jim said, everyone wants to play for him. Everyone wants to work for him. He's a really nice guy, kind. Like Jim said a couple of weeks ago, he let all the guys, the South African guys and what other guys at Gloucester leave to go back to their families when the pandemic kicked in so they could self-isolate and, and, and not be in lockdown in a country separate from their families. So um, <clears throat> things like that, I think he, he, he's brilliant. Now, so I started looking into it. I started thinking, this is weird. It just doesn't sit right with me uh, as to why he's left and, and why he's left now as well, when the season mm. could come back. And, um, you know, you start looking into some changes. Last year, like Jim said, they get into the playoffs, Gloucester. Um, and I used to love going and playing down at the shed. Um, you know, I got loads of abuse, but I actually really enjoyed going to that club um, and playing against them. And, and, I looked at the, I looked at what's going on at the club, and last year they made the playoffs for the first time in ten years. Uh, Gloucester, Stephen Vaughan was the CEO. Uh, they changed CEO over the summer, um, and Lance Bradley comes in um, as new CEO, which for me was a bit of a change and a bit of a surprise because why do you change a CEO when you've just started to have some really good impacts? You've made some quality changes around your squad, around your coaching department, and you've got stability in Johan Ackerman. So you change a CEO, and I started doing my research into that, and Lance Bradley, from what I hear, acts more like a super fan than a CEO. And I, I mean that from, from the rumours that I'm hearing around the club, in the changing rooms, trying to be best mates with the players. And then you dig a little bit that deeper as well. And you sit there and you start finding out why has this happened to Ackerman and you start hearing you know they brought in Rory Teague um, Cipriani some of the issues that he's had uh, around selection non-selection what's happening and then you start hearing rumours and whispers so I heard there was a bit of a coup around uh, players and coaches not being alive. alive not being aligned and very few of them not being aligned but going to Bradley uh, and, and saying right we need to make changes so no way no way yeah. From what I'm hear, hearing, yeah. And I don't think it's the last change we're going to see at the club either. Really? Uh, yeah. 
Gloucester on a fantastic pathway with David Humphreys as your director of rugby, Johan Ackerman as your head coach. They had a squad that was ever improving. They got to the playoffs last year. OK, this year they're sat in ninth, but, you know, you've seen you only need to win a couple of games and you're up near fourth again. So I, I don't read too much into this year. What I do read a lot into is the changes that have been made. Lance Bradley changing things at the club. Um not for the better, in my opinion, around what I'm hearing. Uh, and then there potentially being a bit of a coup to get go behind Ackerman's back and, and by a player, by a coach, by someone uh, who Johan's got wind of this and said, right, if, you, if that's the way I'm going to be treated um, and that's what's happening behind my back, can I go and speak to other clubs? And, I, you know, do I see a future here at Gloucester? Well, no, I don't. So that's what happened. He went to speak to other clubs. And he got a fantastic offer to go and coach as we broke here on uh, on on the rugby pod a couple of weeks ago to go and coach out in Japan. So um, yeah, it's bizarre, really bizarre, and I think really bad sort of management from a CEO perspective. I just do not understand how you can ever build stability when that's the way you act around a club. And this is what I'm being told from sources um, as to what has happened. <laughs> 